in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy, Lord. We thank you for your grace, Lord. We thank you for keeping us.
up because you have declared in your word that if you be lifted up from the earth, you would draw all men unto yourself. And Lord, we thank you because you are the one who has the joy and power. Have your way, Lord, in this service, Lord, today. Have your way, O oh God, in our hearts on today. Take us out of self on today, O oh Lord, and use us unto our own self-glory. In Jesus' name we pray to the glory of God.
thank you, God, for the opportunity to speak before your people, Lord Jesus. I ask you that the meditation of my heart, and the, the words of my heart, and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in that sight, your Lord, and strength and our Redeemer. In the name of Jesus, may everybody be blessed, Lord, today for the word that we may decrease and let you decrease in the name of Jesus. I pray, amen. Amen. Thank you for the opportunity. I can keep the word of God. The topic I want to talk about, as I promised, was power and authority to put those valiant and dry bones there again. Everybody has a valley and dry bones, whatever your dry bones are. And in the, um, I guess, the continuation of the Easter, uh, basically about resurrection power, about how we can. Let our dry bones live again. A lot of us have had our dry bones, they haven't always been dry. You know, they used to live, and so somehow they become dry, and this is to let them live again. And the scripture that I'm coming from is Ezekiel 37 1 14, the Amplified Version, which reads, Thus saying, Of the hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out into the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. And it was full of bones. He caused me to pass all around them, and behold, there were very many human bones in the open valley. And though they were very dry, and he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live again? And I asked, Oh Lord, you know. Again he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God of these bones, Behold, I will make breath into you, that you may come to life. I will put sinews on you, make the flesh grow back on you, cover you with skin, and I will put breath in you so that you may come alive, and you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied more to all, and I commanded, this the Amplified Version. I was commanded, and I prophesied there was a thundering noise, a whole lot rattling, and the bones came together, bone to his bone, and I looked at the whole there were sinews on the bones. And flesh grew with its skin coming there, and there was no breath in it. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, Son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come forth the four winds, O wind, and breathe on the slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they came to life and stood up on their feet, and they see in great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are completely cut off. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and make you come up, up out of your graves, my people, and I will bring you back to home, I will bring you back home to the land of Israel. Then you will know the confidence that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and make you come up, up out of the graves, my people, I will put my spirit in you and you will come to life, and I will place you in my in your own land, then you will know that I the Lord has spoken and fulfilled it, says the Lord. May you let us take the doing and hearing of his magnificent mighty powerful word. Everyone has a dry situation, circumstance, and even a dry state of mind that exists for them at one time or another in their life, some more than others. Uh, a dry place is also referred to as dehydrated or thirsty or dried out. Some of us have dried up finances, some of us have parched health issues, others still grasping with emotional distresses that have become dry and dehydrated. Ezekiel's vision of the valley of dry bones in the chapters that he's read, hinting at after God had directed him to prophesy the rebirth of Israel, chapter 36. God announced through the prophet that Israel will be restored to her land in blessing under the leadership of David, my servant, who shall be king over them. Now, the Neo Assyrian Empire was an Iron Age Mesopotamian Empire. This is the existence between 911 and 609 BC and became the largest empire of the world up until that time. The Assyrians perfected early techniques of imperial rule, many of which became standard in later empires and was, according to many historians, the first real empire in history. The Assyrians were the first to be armed with iron weapons and their troops employed advanced. Effective military tactics. Upon the death of Ashur Badapal in 627 BC, the empire began to disintegrate due to a brutal and unremitting series of civil wars in Assyria proper. 
In 616 BC, Cyaxarus, king of the Medes and Persians, made alliances with Nebuchadnezzar, ruler of Babylonians and Champions, and also the Scythians and Cyprians against Assyria. At the fall of Haran 609 BC, and Babylonians and Medes defeated the Assyrian Egypt alliance, after which Assyria largely ceased to exist as an independent state. A failed attempt to reconquer the Iran into the Assyrian Empire. Although the empire fell, Assyrian history continued, and there are still Assyrians living in Iran and are right and in the present day. God transported his Ezekiel, probably not literally, but in a vision, to a valley of full of dry bones and what was left after the attack and directed him to speak to the bones. Ezekiel was to tell the bones that God would make breath into the bones and they would come to life, just as the creation of he breathed life into Adam in Genesis 2 7. This suggests to me that God can breathe life into anything in our lives that is dry and dehydrated and make them live again to become a great army. That means health issues will be restored and made whole. Finances will be restored and made prosperous in our lives. Thus saith the word of the Lord. When God shows up, miraculous things happen. Take the woman with the issue of blood, for example. She was not only healed, but she was made whole. She pressed her way to the Lord until she touched the hand of her God. Her instructions from God were, go and sin no more, and she would remain healed and whole. The ten men were nervous. He told them to go and show themselves to the priests. They were healed as they obeyed God and traveled to the priests to show them what God had done, what Jesus had done. The blind man at the pool of the vessel was told, take up your bed and walk. His eyesight came back as he obeyed God and picked up his bed. Well, he was able to walk, I'm sorry. Uh, when he picked up his bed and walked. Uh, the men with the talents unto each of them gave according to the several ability. Those that invested the money that were given that were given to them gained the increase and was able to enter into the joy of the Lord, and God made them ruler over many things. They became prosperous as they obeyed God and did what he told them to do. The Medo Babylonian war against the Assyrian Empire was the last war fought by the Medo Assyrian Empire. The war ultimately led to the destruction of Assyrian Empire. The years of the Babylonian Empire constituted the most important turning point in the history of Judah and the Judeans of the first millennium BC. After the Egyptians were defeated by the Babylonians at the Battle of Carchemism in 605 BC, Nebuchadnezzar II then besieged Jerusalem. Jehoiakim changed alliances, allegiances to avoid the destruction of Jerusalem. Jerusalem was the only city to be destroyed in the urban and military center. Shaddai were also laid waste, and all the governmental apparatus of the army of Judah ceased to exist. In the wake of these events came the collapse of the outlying settlements of the Jordan Valley and along the western shore of the Deceit, the Negev, the southern hills of Judah, and the southern Shephelah. Many people met by the destruction of exile on a national crisis at the beginning of a new stage in the history of the people of the land. The exile of the king of Babylon was forced to adjust to a life of Without a nation and without a temple. The vision of God had dry bones symbolized the whole house of Israel that was dead in captivity. Like unburied skeletons, the people were in a state of living dead, hiding away with no end to the judgment in sight. They thought their hopes were gone, and they thought they were cut off forever. The surviving Israelites felt their national hopes had been ruined and the nation had died in the flames of Babylon's attack with no hope of resurrection. This is what they thought because of what they saw. Like so many of us today, we allow our surroundings to pick our destiny and our future. Just because you live in a low income area and you see ruin around you, you may think you will always live in a low income area and always have to be surrounded by ruin. Or you may think because you see your health deteriorating and your plus, and of course, because of the doctor's report, you think that you're never going to be healed. But some of us allow what we see or what has happened to us to determine in our mind. That is our future, not solely for the resurrected God of our soul. The vision of God and dry bones also symbolizes our house that may be in captivity when you're feeling there is no hope in sight. You may be feeling like all hope is gone and you are pining away, waiting for judgment call. You may be feeling your hope is gone and cut off forever. The hope is a good thing. Psalm 75 of our version says, For you are my hope, O Lord. You are my trust. And the source of my confidence 
that's from what I knew. The time of Babylonian rule was relatively brief because when it changes in society, religion and religious ritual instituted by the people were meeting in Jew. After two generations of Babylonian exile, the time for redemption has arrived. The time for us to recover all that we have lost has arrived as well. Our restoration, our revitalization, our recovery is here and now. The revival of the dry bones signify God's plan for our future, our restoration. The vision also, and most importantly, showed us how a new land depends on God's power and not the circumstances we're in. Putting breath by God's Spirit into our dry bones shows us that God not only will restore our dry situation and circumstance to full capacity, both physically and spiritually, if we believe, but our body of dry bones, whatever your dry bones are today, will also become a great army. We will be countlessly blessed. We will be prodigious in our wealth. We will be boundless and unlimited in our health and in any other area that is dry in our lives. Both the dwindling population of the Benjamin region during the Persian period and the abandonment of the important uh, centers that have developed here during the Babylonian years are evidence of the shift that took place in Judah during the return to Zion. As a result, Jerusalem was destroyed. Roman army led by the future emperor Titus, with Tiberius, Julius, Alexander as his second in command, besieged and conquered the city of Jerusalem, which had been controlled by the Korean rebel factions since 66 BC. Following the Jerusalem rise of 66, when the Judean provisional government was formed in Jerusalem, the siege of Jerusalem in the year 70 CE was the decisive event of the first Jewish Roman war in which the Roman army captured the city. And destroyed both the city and its temple. The Roman army, led by the future emperor Titus and Tiberius Julius Alexander, as his second in command, besieged and conquered the city of Jerusalem, which had been controlled by Judean rebel factions since 66 CE, following the Jerusalem riots in 66, when the Judean provisional government was formed in Jerusalem. How can we cope with a world gone astray? We who are destined to begin or continue our lives ministry as a servant of God will be uprooted from our comfort zone to languish in despair as we pursue Christ. God is not confined to a narrow prism of our walls. Instead, He is a universal God who commands and controls persons and nations all over the world. In Babylon, God imparted to Ezekiel His word for the people. His call experienced transformation. His call experienced transformed Ezekiel. He became avidly devoted to God's word. He realized he had nothing personal to assist the captors in their bitter situation, but he was convinced God's word spoke to their condition and could give them victory in it. Just as God's word spoken in our condition today will give us victory in our situation as well. Ezekiel used various methods to convey God's words to the people. He used art and drawing, depiction in Jerusalem. Symbolic actions and unusual conduct to steal attention. Don't try this at home. Uh, he cut his hair and beard to demonstrate what God would do to Jerusalem and its inhabitants. The book of Ezekiel called us to join in a fresh and living encounter with God with Abraham, Moses, and the prophets. We must be overcome, or we will be overcome by the world. Ezekiel chapter 6. To recognize that God holds his servants responsible for warning wicked people, wicked men of their peril, to experience a living relationship with Jesus Christ, who said that a new covenant is to be found in his blood. The siege of the city began in 14 April 70 CE, three days before the beginning of the Passover that year. The siege lasted for over four months, with the battle of the city lasting for close to another week after that. The siege ended in 30 August 70 CE burning and destruction of the second temple, and the Romans entered and kicked out the lower city. The destruction of both the first and the second temple is still mourned annually during the Jewish fast at Tisha Bea. The Arch of Titus celebrating the Romans' sack of Jerusalem, and the temple still stands in Rome. The conquest of the city was complete on 8 September 7 CE. From early youth, Ezekiel had been educated and trained to be a priest in the kingdom of Judah, but his hopes and dreams had been dashed by King Nebuchadnezzar's invasion, taking him 
him and other young Jews captive to Babylon. Now, Bar separated from the temple in Jerusalem. How could his education and training be of any real value? There was no need to worry. God was looking after his own. The Creator had called Ezekiel to be a great prophet, ranked alongside Isaiah and Jeremiah. Just as our hopes and dreams today have been ruined by the enemy's attack on us, uh, putting us in situations and circumstances that make us feel like we're in captivity. Our destination seems to get farther and farther away from us, which seems to separate us from God and our destiny. How can our education and training to glorify God be any real value when our finances are dry or our health is deteriorated and coming dehydrated? God gave Ezekiel a great mission to accomplish that he gives to us. He had important announcements to make. These were intended to reach people far beyond his own time to be moved down through the ages. And one important vision would serve to encourage all who have ever lived in facing the same remorseless enemy, the seemingly hopeless ending of life and death. Just as God gives us assignments to complete, we too have urgent messages to the people to deliver. We're always restless and ruthless enemies who have no desire for Christians to succeed or serve God. The enemy will try everything they can intruding on our imagination, our hopes, and our dreams to get us to turn our back on God. Don't do it. Despite early successes in repelling the Roman sieges and zealots fought amongst themselves, and they lacked proper leadership, resulting in poor discipline, training, and preparation in for the battles that were to follow. Thank you. 
value of God also. And the God is today is mine. Corinthians 15, 1 and 2 says, Now what is this? A bigger mind you once again for the good news of salvation which I preach to you, which you all have accepted in heart, which you stand by faith. But this faith you are saved and reborn from above, spiritually transformed and human and set apart for his purpose. And you hold worthy to his word which I preach to you, unless you believe in being a just Christian and without a way of living. Failures, problems, and bad decisions, we have all suffered. It's not to let go of the past because, of, uh, because that is limiting your present opportunities. Don't let, don't live in a constant state of regret anymore. Do not repent without a gift. The past is over and gone, but the risk is here. And that should tell you something great that's about to take place. Second, uh, second guessing yourself and stop allowing yourself to be tormented by painful memories of your past because of it. It's not worth it for us to go around with the heavy words and memories and mistakes. Jesus did not come to be with us. He came to live with us about the human life and that life more wonderfully that we are living now. He may not come when you want him when he's right on time. God will give us a clean slate and a second chance of life if we ask him and believe it we receive. The Bible says that when we come to him, he wipes away our past and gives us an additional life. Jesus paid the price in full for every sin we've ever committed. We'll commit or are committed. Romans 8 tells us, therefore, there is no condemnation for those of us in Christ Jesus. Jesus was crucified on the cross so that we could stop crucifying ourselves. He was put up by our hands. We can use it to come to us as soon as we can. We are done by our hands. The cross has to be put us behind a dress box to work with all to win the prize for which God has called me everywhere in Christ Jesus. We are being sweet, great, and wonderful. However, we can believe in God's power in our lives by believing that God is truly forgiven us. God's power will cancel our past hurts and forgive us of all our sins. Regardless of what we have done in the past, our future has been redeemed because God's Christ's sacrifice is on the cross of Calvary. Jesus' resurrection is more than just an event that happened one day, it's the source of the power we experience each and every day in our lives. The same resurrection power that brought Jesus from life to death. It's the same resurrection power that will bring us up out of our dead situations and from death to life. In the name of Jesus, I consider it not and it is so. When we experience God's resurrection power, we begin to experience remarkable and astounding results as well as the purposes and transformations in our life and in our lives. Our hope of the resurrection isn't just for now, um, isn't just for the future. When we physically die and go to heaven, it's also for here and now. While we're living on earth and struggling with sin, we can make use of God's power and authority to help us overcome sin, sickness, and death right now and every day in our lives. Embracing God's forgiveness and receiving His grace by faith and allow God's will to come upon you. The power of God never fails. God is a powerful God. He holds all power in His hand and He can do anything to fail. Look beyond the world, the world's values, which are only temporary, to what has eternal value. Base your decisions for all aspects of your life on what matters most to eternity. Make the most of the time here on earth, but where your heart is, there your treasure will be also. Remember that death uh, must always precede resurrection. You can't come out of something unless you go through something first. Be willing to sacrifice whatever selfish desires and agendas you have and confident with God's word and his purposes for your life. Decide to crucify your selfish attitudes and behaviors so God will raise you to a new life by transforming your attitudes and behaviors into healthy ones that will help you grow to be more like Jesus. Just as the resurrection itself was impossible for any form of God, the power behind the resurrection will take you and I into situations that are impossible for us to achieve successfully on our own. Expect God to challenge you with when you ask for his resurrection power in your life, but know that if you trust in me, we will experience greater accomplishments than we can ever imagine. Eyes have not seen and ears have not heard what the Lord has in store for us. He will bring life into our broken bodies. He will be uh, our broken dreams, our delayed promises, and give us a new lease on life. He promises that he will do it because he says it in his word. When God word goes forth and it does not come back forth, his word always accomplishes what he was set out to be. He will give us a positive expectation of what to come and help uh, us to see the world with optimism, courage, and confidence once again that everything is going to be all right.
Jesus is dead, burying over the resurrection, no the power of Satan and over death. And he had many other privileges there. That's why Satan now has to come to God to get permission to afflict any of God's children, which was the case with Job. When Jesus is dead on the cross for our sins, no one may have eternal life. Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 16. In this statement, Jesus declares the reason for his birth, the reason for his death, and the reason for his resurrection to provide the way to heaven for sinful mankind who could never get there on their own. When Saul of Tar Tarsus, who had later renamed Paul, saw the resurrection of Jesus Christ on the Damascus road, Saul converted to Christianity before his conversion. Paul approved of the stoning of Stephen, Acts 7 58, and was the restless persecutor of the early church. The conversion of Paul, or apostle, was according to the New Testament, and it meant in the life of Paul, the apostle had met him to cease persecuting early Christians and become a follower of Jesus. Paul has not Paul was not a follower of Jesus and did not know him before his crucifixion. Paul's conversion occurred after Jesus' crucifixion. The accounts of Paul's conversion experience are described as miraculous, supernatural in nature. Before his conversion, Paul then known as Saul was a Pharisee of Pharisees who had technically persecuted the followers. And I conclude with the scripture 2 Corinthians 4, 8 to 12 says, We are pressed on every side, pinched in, but not crushed. Perplexed, unsure of finding a way out, but not driven to despair. Let it down and persecuted, but not deserted to stand alone. Struck down, but never destroyed, always carrying around the body of the dying of Jesus, so that the resurrection of life of Jesus also may be shown in our body. For we who will live are constantly experiencing the threat of being handed over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the resurrection of life of Jesus also may be evidenced in our mortal body, which is subject to death. So physical death is actively working in us, but spiritual life is actively working in you. May the Lord have us to read it. Oh, Leah, look at 